On this episode of On Tap, we meet the crew from Bigwood and hear how a terrible construction market turned into a great brewery. And we'll chat with Sierra Nevada at Northgate Wine and Spirits to learn about ways to make brewing more sustainable. Finally, the guys at the roadside share with us why having a great craft beer menu makes the restaurant stand out. We're here at the Roadside in Blaine for On Tap, our new show about craft beer, the people who make it, the people who sell it, and the people who drink it. And I'm Ben Hale. And I'm Danica Peterson. And today we are at the Roadside, like Ben said, here in Blaine, and we're going to be talking more to them later in the show. But first, we'd like to talk about what we're drinking. Today, I'm drinking Harriet Brewing Divine Oculus from Minneapolis. And I have got uh, Hammer Hearts Double and Raid, and Hammer Heart is just next door over in Lionel Lakes. Our neighbor. Yeah, exactly. And uh, something we're going to try and do on every show that we do here for Untap is go to a local brewery, kind of tell you their story, learn about them, learn uh, their, from their beginnings to where they are today. For our first show, we headed over to Bigwood Brewery in White Bear Lake. This brewery is more about the people. Um, from my perspective, we know we have to have great beer. We know we have to have good branding and all that kind of stuff. But I may I connect with the people, and that's what really I'm about. I'm about making you happy. I'm a pleaser. I want to see you smile. Big Wood Brewery is all about the people, and it was born out of a care for people. Tell me how this came to be. Tell me the story behind Big Wood Brewery. So I uh, was running a Harvard Flooring Distribution Center in um, Vandas Heights. Um, the, my typical customer was a guy in a van that would come in and pick up wood flooring or I'd sell it to the floor stores. Um, and then uh, the recession came in 2009 and um, my customers just came in a van and sit around and complained and uh, didn't buy anything. And uh, we had, uh, I went from 40 some employees to 20 some and uh, it was just kind of depressing. I was with a buddy and I said, what about a beer business? And I didn't know anything about brewing beer and I just thought it would be cool for my customers to um, come in, taste the beer, um, and just kind of uh, have them s really something positive to talk about. It was really the enthusiasm that uh, my employees and my customers got out of it that really got me to actually do it. It was just kind of an idea, and um, I did it just to let them sample beer. So I went through the process of getting my TTB license and, and all that just on my own. I just figured, filled out the paperwork and I bought a little Sabco, and I was just gonna be a licensed brewery, uh, just for kicks. It didn't take long for Steve to realize that he had a real business on his hands. He soon brought in his friend Jason, who had a background in advertising, and then Bigwood started to take off. He calls me up one day in 2010, at, at the end of 2010, and he was like, Jason, I, I, got, I gotta talk to you about something. You, you gotta check this out. You gotta check this industry out. It's so cool. I got my license and I went to my first um, association meeting uh, at the Minnesota Guild and I got accepted um, into their organization. And I was just this little tiny guy and I was in there with Summit and Surly and Fold and all these guys. And I, it was my introduction to a new industry. And I'm like, this is cool. These guys are passionate. This is something that I'm excited about. I mean, um, everybody, I don't know if everybody likes beer, but everybody like me likes beer. But to actually make it their, um, make it their career and really get, I was just so excited by everyone. They were talking about my brand because it was goofy. I was a little different and I was just really inspired by the other breweries. It's really a cool craft beer scene here in Minnesota and that you're right. That has kind of come on in recent years and really taken off. And, um, you know, why does it take off here over some other states? I mean, it, I, I don't know. We are now the 10th largest state by volume in the United States uh, for craft beer. So that's, that's a really cool thing for Minnesota. We have broke the top 10. The core team was complete when Steve hired Ty McBee as his brewer. And I hired him off Facebook, put an ad on Facebook. And in one day, I had eight guys come in. I just set it up for one day because I'm pretty lazy. And um, he was the, he was the uh, third to the last guy. Honestly, we probably didn't even talk about beer because I noticed a, a picture of my hometown uh, sitting on his desk. And he had climbed a 14er, uh, Mount Sherman, uh, which is in the uh, Mosquito Range, uh, which is uh, on the eastern side of Leadville. And I've climbed that many times and looked down and looked at my hometown. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, that's my hometown. He's the only guy that didn't bring beer. He didn't even really talk a lot about beer, but he was a cool d kid to talk to. He was, a, he was a guy that had personality. As I was uh, walking down the, st uh, the stairs, I, I saw a kid come up with a, 
with a messenger bag and a six pack of beer and I was going downstairs and I still had my car hearts on and a tape measure and a pencil behind my ear and sawdust all over me and I thought to myself, oh, that was a good shot. Uh, eventually, uh, about two weeks later, uh, I called Steve out of the blue and I was like, did anyone get that job? I'm just wondering, never heard anything back and he was like, oh, you did. I just wanted to work with him and when you're an entrepreneur and you run your own business, that's your biggest, uh, your biggest uh, benefit from this because you get to choose who you work with. So I hired him in um, July and we won Best Beer at ABR with Morning Wood um, in September. The team at Big Wood has a desire to be unique and that is one reason why they decided to put down roots in White Bear Lake. We looked at Northeast Minneapolis and the realtor at the time said there's going to be 15 breweries here. And we did a lot, I, we were in Vandas Heights at the time and uh, Jason lived, lived in White Bear Lake so we spent a lot of time in the bars here. We looked in a lot of different locations. Um, from Northeast to Minneapolis to St. Paul to Shoreview to Anoka and um, a lot of different places. And when we kind of came across, I'm from the White Bear Lake area, and when we kind of came across this building, we walked in and we saw the doors in here and those were all here. We didn't put those here, they were here. And we saw this little space and we thought, geez, that's neat. I, you know, the Indeed building was a really neat building. I looked at that before they were in there, but it didn't, I didn't want to be in the one of 15 in, a, in that area. And I, it's great for population. It's great for um, traffic in your tap room. And so it was just really cool. And it had this really kind of unique characteristic. And the building was built in 1906. So it's, a, it's an old building. And it's got a lot of character with the brick. And um, we, we just kind of fell in love with it and said, this is kind of our home. Big Wood pushes out about 500 barrels of beer in a year much of which is consumed right in their own tap room, which always has 10 different beers on tap. The tap room was designed and built with a specific atmosphere in mind. You really start an environment here where it's about the conversation. People come in in groups or, or if they're sitting in a bar, um, last Wednesday night I had someone from Kansas City, someone from North Carolina, and a couple of Minnesota people all talking about the same restaurant in Kansas City. And I really like that, because. A lot of this is really open for strangers to talk to each other, but then the groups come in and they just get, um, all they do is just talk and have a good time. It's really about having a beer and talking to your friends. Well, we really wanted that kind of speakeasy um, environment. You know, um, ours is a little different. You walk down into it. It's kind of in, you know, almost a subterrane kind of uh, level to it. And, um, you know, we just want it to be really quaint and really, uh, you know, a place where people can just come and enjoy great beer and uh, talk with one another. You know, we don't have big screen TVs. We're not a sports bar kind of environment, um, and that's by design. Um, we, we really wanted people to just come in here and, you know, chat with one another, get to know one another again over a great pint like it used to be. When visiting Big Wood, you'll find Ty sitting with customers talking beer, Jason making sure everyone is having a good time, and Steve might be doing stand-up comedy or working behind the bar. And if he is behind the bar, watch out as a beer might come sliding your way. Uh, might need a couple shots. All right. Good job. Nice. When it comes to actually having one of those pints, Steve, Jason, and Ty all have their own favorites. I really like uh, uh, traditional German beers made right. Uh, uh, I, I really like beers that are brewed so well into the style that they really just slap you in the face with rightness, you know. Everything Thai does kind of has a different, um, we try and brew it a little different than everybody else, or at least to our style. Our style is really drinkable beer. Uh, my favorite's Jack Savage. As far as drinkability, I drink a lot of that one. Um, still Morning Wood, the coffee stout, is the most unique to me. I love all of our beers. Ty does a great job um, with recipe development and stuff like that. And, um, but my favorite beer that we brew is Bad Axe. It's our Imperial IPA. It is definitely my favorite one. I look forward to every year when that comes out and, and you know, drinking as much as I can of it. But uh, you can't drink too much of it because it's 9.8% alcohol. Ty, Steve, and Jason all commented on how working in the craft beer industry doesn't feel much like work, but it certainly is a passion. 
I think that's the nature of craft beer. Um, everything is very personal, personal, you know, from the beers and the beer styles that you brew to exact, you're exactly right about, you know, we went, Steve, Ty and I and, and, and Jay, um, we basically designed this tap room as we went. It's nice, you know, I look around and, you know, I, I definitely have a lot of pride in all this. Awesome. You know, I see my, my name stamped all over this place. I always say this, and I don't mean it as an inappropriate joke, but I want to expose as many people as I can to Big Wood. And I want them to, have, I want them to, I want them to experience the brand and have a good time with it. Um, so I, I, I really want to be in as many states and as many places as I can be, because I don't, I don't think it's just about the beer for us, it's about the fun. Yeah, it's very, it's very much a labor of love from the beer to, to the environment and kind of sitting in here enjoying a pint ourselves, which we do on a fairly frequent basis. Um, you just kind of look around and kind of go, you know, we all had a hand in this. And, and, uh, and so it's a good feeling. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. So you see, son, good manners are important. Should I go through it again? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome. Excuse me, sit up straight, hold doors open for ladies. If the door's locked, knock first. Don't burp, don't swear, don't stare, don't use bad language. Or talk with your mouthful, keep your elbows off the table. What table? Don't interrupt. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. On the bus, give your seat up to anybody who has trouble standing. Bottom line, treat others the way you want to be treated. Got it? Got it. Good talk. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to On Tap, and we are on location again here at the Roadside in Blaine. And again, we will be hearing more from them in uh, coming up a little bit later in the show. But uh, to finish up where we were last segment at Big Wood, and uh, you know, it was a really good experience there at Big Wood. They had just so many. We tried. I tried a bunch of different of their beers, and uh, really enjoyed my time. I really liked their uh, the Black IPA that they had on tap right now. It was uh, it was definitely my favorite of the ones I tried. The location, like we showed you, just really unique, really mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Whole lot of character in that building. Yeah. And uh, I had a couple of great IPAs while I was there, and just. Yeah. And uh, the guys are pretty funny as well. And as Steve said, you know, he's going to be doing the stand up comedy, so you might want to check it out. <laughs> well, next we're going to head over to Northgate Liquors here in Blaine. They've been working on doing educational series with uh, beer, wine, and liquor for a number of months. And they recently hosted Sierra Nevada, the second largest craft brewer in the nation, who talked about sustainability in brewing. <laughs> We started these classes two years ago, a little over two years ago. Um, Jay Smarty, uh, sixth generation brewmaster from Shells, um, headed up the first class. They've been a success ever since. In a back room at Northgate Wine and Spirits, avid beer fans gather every month to listen, learn, and taste. Start off with a little bit of history. They will talk about their passions, which make, what makes the brewery tick. Um, the reason for being basically uh, sample out a wide variety of different beer, beer styles, talk about each style, each beer. This class featured Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, the second largest craft brewer in the nation. We have a very rich history. Um, we started in 1980. Um, we were one of the original craft brewers out there. Um, so basically I'm going to talk today about um, the struggles in 1980 to, uh, to make very hot forward beers um, when, we, when we were living in a world of uh, domestic light drinkers. Mm -hmm. In 1980, there were 92 brewers across the country, and that number had been on a steady decline since the 40s. Outside of Prohibition, there had never been a worse time to start a brewery. So, 
Starting one required a little bit of innovation. The, the startup of, of a craft brewery in, in 1980, um, the fact that there was not a lot uh, of equipment around for, for small base breweries, um, so the struggles to um, basically Ken would go around and take um, old dairy equipment and refurbish those into fermentation tanks. Um, Ken's a very hands-on, very mechanical, forward-thinking person, um, so he built a lot of his own stuff um, up and coming and kind of transformed those into uh, brewing equipment. Their rough start with finding equipment and introducing America to new flavors makes Sierra Nevada's story unique. And every brewery has a story to tell, and they are all different. From uh, New Belgium to Surly, and now of course Sierra Nevada, uh, they all have a reason why they started in the business. And this is their opportunity to really kind of personalize to a group of people why they're, why, why they're here. That's why people come, to hear these stories and to drink great beer. We actually have people that come every single month over and over again. And these, these are very well versed uh, beer people. A lot of them are home brewers. They know the answers to the questions before they're even answered, some of them. Um, others, as I said, they're just new and they just want to learn. They want to sample beers and what a great opportunity to not only learn about the brewery, learn about the beer, but get to drink it too. These seminar attendees got to try a variety of beer styles, including one beer that hasn't even been released yet. We're going to do some of our classics. Uh, Pale Ale was the, uh, the first beer that we launched in 1980. Um, and then we're going to do uh, Bigfoot Barley Wine, which is a very big, um, barley wine's a, a very, very malt forward, high ABV beer. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. That was our first seasonal launch in 1983. Um, and then we're going to roll into um, some collaborations that we have done throughout the years. Um, we actually work with a monastery about a half an hour north of the brewery to create true Abbey beers. Um, so we're going to sample out some of those. And then we are going to dive into some of our newer beers that we have launched since we opened up our new brewery in North Carolina. With the tastings happening throughout the evening, Steve also shared about what continues to make Sierra Nevada stand out in a growing industry. And we're also going to talk about Sierra Nevada's sustainability. Um, we have a very, we're very focused on um, conservation and sustainability. Um, so we're going to talk a lot about, um, you know, our efforts to produce our own power, um, as well as keep um, keep our, our solid waste out of out of landfills and stuff like that. They don't just produce a little bit of their own power; they have four hydrogen fuel cells that make up about 40 percent of their power, and they have the largest solar field in America that can produce up to 50 percent of their power needs on a sunny day um. through recycling, composting and an on-site water treatment plant. More than 99.5% of the brewery's solid waste stays out of landfills. These efforts earned them the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Green Business of the Year Award in 2010. Every month I learn something new. So it, it, it's for every walk of life can enjoy these seminars. And the regular attendees seem to learn something too, because they keep coming back. And Lisa thinks that's great. Great for the attendees to learn, great for the breweries to be able to showcase their work, and great for the store to play host to these events month after month. Well, I think it opens up a, a whole new opportunity for us to be able to present something, not just sell the beer, to actually uh, learn about our customers. Uh, every month now, I mean, they, they know my name, I know a lot of their names. Um, it, it, I, it, I think it just makes us very personable and uh, bring something that no other store in the area has. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov.
Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Welcome back to On Tap, and now it is time to learn more about where we've been the whole show. We've been here at the roadside, and uh, Justin Cruz, the general manager, is here to tell us a little bit more about the roadside. You know, uh, I've been coming over here since since you guys opened. How long has it been now since you guys opened? We opened in October of 2013. Okay, yeah. So and. Uh, and uh, you're right here on uh, Main Street, just or County Road 14, off of, not far off of 65. Yep. And uh, you guys have a great craft beer selection. Thank you. And uh, that, that's what got me in the door. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> I think that's gets a lot. So that's what got us. There. So why, why, why craft beer? Why did you guys make it a point to you know have a rotating selection of good beer? Yeah, it's a booming market, um, especially in the cities. All the breweries that are popping up. So um, it's something that's going to draw people in. And it's something that is always different. So you'll always find something that, you know, there's always something for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's something that we really made a point of pride to bring in stuff that other people won't have or that you've never heard of before. So uh, we have 26 tap lines right now, and we probably have 33 different beers in-house ready to go on. So it's constantly changing, and it's constantly drawing people in. And what are some local breweries that you guys work with a lot? I uh, work with a lot of Hammerheart. Um, we've had them on tap ever since we've opened. Uh, Summit and Surly are the two big guys. Um, Indeed, uh, Boom Island, uh, Harriet is on tap right now. So anything local, we're going to uh, reach out to Insight and uh, Fair State. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, awesome. anything that we can get. Awesome. And uh, you guys, uh, a little bit, you have a kind of a pretty unique menu, I'd say, too. I mean, to, you know, you've got good beer, but then you got, you got great food as well. And we've got just a little sampling of it here. Yep. Yeah, we, um, you know, we really focus on locally sourced food that's, you know, never frozen, quick from uh, order to table, um, fresh. And, um, yeah, we really strive to be unique, but still, you know, offer something that people aren't going to, you know, stretch them too far out of their comfort zone. But. And you always you have uh, specials too for people, so there's always you know yeah. you know people come here a lot. There's always something different. Yep, yep. yep. Every weekend we run them from Thursday to you know throughout the week. So, okay. yep. And what are some of your most popular items? Uh, the pork belly tacos are my personal favorite. I, the pork belly that we have is fantastic. Uh, we we don't have an oven, but we do have a huge smoker, so that we use that as often as we can. But um, the burgers are, are great. Uh, we, the 242 here. Yeah, we got one right yep. here. <laughs> yep, one of the favorites. Um, but yeah, burgers and tacos, if you do it well, then people keep coming back. And the sausage, too. You guys do a lot of different yeah, things with yep. sausage. Yep, really happy with the Southside Market sausage that we have. So um, it's unique. It's different. We can do different things with it, load them up different ways. We've done different specials with them. Right now, we have a Reuben dog. So we put corned beef, sauerkraut, and uh, Thousand Island. On a, on a brat, basically, so, yeah. That's, that's quite a meal right really there. <laughs> it is a meal, I've had it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and um, you guys uh, also, not just inside, but you got an outside presence here, and yeah. so we're looking out the window here. It's, uh, you, you got some fun games outside. Yeah, yeah. it's a gorgeous patio. We have uh, bocce leagues is our main focus throughout the summer. Uh, we have spring, summer, and fall seasons, so, and we get those going four nights a week. And then we also have bags and uh, giant Jenga. So anything to keep people entertained as they're out there on a gorgeous uh, summer, spring, fall day. How do you awesome. come up with bocce? A lot of people you know, have heard of bowling leagues or dart leagues or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's just something that, you know, again, is unique but doesn't push too far out. So um, it's pretty easy, one arm band or you know, one arm sports. So <laughs> it works well. Um, and then we had the nice space for it. And, yeah. Awesome. All right, now back to the beer, because that, that's what we're here for. Yep. Uh, you, you guys also always have flights available for people, too. You kind of talk about, you have, I know you always have a feature flight, but then you can get almost yep. anything in a flight, yep. too. Anything, any of the 26 beers come on a flight. Um, sometimes we will uh, feature four, like right now we have the Odell Brewery featured, so we have four different um, Odells featured um, as the flight. And so um, you can, you know, I've never heard of these four beers. I want to try them, but I don't want a full pint. So it's just something to, to give the customer a little, you know, leniency to. I don't. I don't want a full one, but I'll sample. 
And then if they don't want a full beer all to themselves, then two people can split a flight. It works out well that way as well. Awesome. So what do you think brings people here? I think I've seen a lot of people here time after time. You have a lot of repeat, repeat clientele yeah, as well. Absolutely. And then, you know, new people in the neighborhood as well looking for a restaurant that's not a chain. Right. Yeah, I think that the beer list is um, something that we really put um, a lot of time into to, to bring people in. And they'll come in and, oh, what's new today? Like they expect it that, you know, something's going to be new every time they come in, which we like. And then, you know, the food too. So uh, everybody's got a favorite. All right, before we, let, before we finish up here, uh, I didn't ask you this beforehand or let you know about this, but do you have a favorite, a favorite beer that you guys have featured on tap here? Or what, what do you like to drink when, when it comes to beer? Yeah, the Hammerheart right now, the Dublin Raid, is my favorite Hammerheart that they brew. So, um, but I am an IPA fan, so um, the Bell's Too Hearted is always a mainstay and always a favorite. But Awesome. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, Justin. Thanks, thanks for telling us yeah, thanks a little bit about it, and thanks for hosting us here at the roadside. It's been great. Yeah. And uh, we want to thank all of you for watching On Tap. Remember, uh, any of our shows of North Metro TV available on NorthMetroTV.com. You can check any of them out there. Uh, but for uh, Justin, for everyone here at the roadside, for Danica, I'm Ben. And uh, remember, drink good beer and drink it responsibly. Cheers. On Tap is sponsored in part by Northgate Wine and Spirits, your friendly neighborhood liquor store with more craft beer than days in the year. Their stores in Blaine, Andover, Woodbury, and Cottage Grove are serving up great customer service. And by The Roadside, an independent restaurant in Blaine serving gourmet tacos, burgers, beer, and more.